Hi everyone and welcome to the French Watch Collector. Today on the bench we have a very special project. Uh, we have an Omega Speedmaster Mark III and you can see the state of this watch is uh, pretty poor. I bought this watch at auction. You see it's missing the crown, missing the stem, the case is quite rough. The look of the watch is quite rough. I don't know what I will find inside, but uh, as you know I quite like a chronograph watch. And uh, yeah, this movement like the Omega Caliber uh, 1040 that should be inside is a very nice movement and uh, something that I really like to restore. So let's see what I can find inside. Wow, that's that's a disaster. You, you see the movement? Like already when I remove the case, some stuff is moving. Like look at the, look at the states. Yeah, it's, I don't know what happened to this watch. Like there is a screw missing. Everything is moving. Oof, I don't really like that. On you see the balance wheel. Like it's not really center. It's uh, out of the way. So. I hope so nothing is broken like on the, on a balance wheel. So first let's remove the screws from the uh, from the from the mass from the winding system from the, the rotor mass. There we go. See the color of the movement as well is like very yeah the color is not right for an Omega watch. So let's see if I can remove it from the case. Yeah, it's coming out of the case. I just bought a, a winding stem and a crown that uh, fits. And I will try to align the wheel, the, the hand, sorry. Yeah, here we go. But yeah, you see it's not working very well, like something is broken inside as well. We'll have to figure it out later. So first, try to remove the hand, start by the small ones. So that's uh, our hand from the chronograph, the second uh, running uh, hand. We'll just put them aside for now with my uh, carbon tweezers, just to make sure I don't damage the dial, even if it's a bit damaged, but it's not too bad. And now we try to remove the center, uh, the center hands, which is quite a lot of hands on this, uh, on this watch. There we go. So, so far so good, we managed to remove the hands and I will try to remove the dials now and see what's uh, underneath. Okay, just store it in a, in a little box for now, just to make sure I keep the hand and the dial uh, safe and I don't damage them uh, even further. And after we'll be able to focus on uh, on the movement, which uh, yeah, we saw already on the other side is missing some parts. Uh, for sure the watch is not running, you saw, like because of the parts missing, the balance wheel was not uh, aligned. Yeah, there is a lot of stuff wrong with this watch, so I don't know if I will be able to, to make it run again, yeah. So okay, on the calendar side, looks a bit better. I'm removing this uh, plate, this calendar plate on the top. Here we go. Just see a bit of rust on the parts that, not a lot, but uh, yeah, tiny bit of rust. Just removing this uh, spring, like which is for the date, uh, quick side date jumper. Removing the parts on the center. That's the cent that's a jumper for the for the date. Go the date uh, date disc. Just putting as well with the other part, just to make sure it doesn't get damaged. Back the dial. Here we go. Everything is in this uh, box, and I can start disassembling the the movement. So first, I will remove the balance wheel because I don't want to damage it any further. And after further inspection, it looks okay. Um, this we have like the chronograph bridger, which we saw it was missing some spring. And actually on the movement, like we saw like it's, uh, some parts are missing. We see when we reassemble the watch, but on the chronograph, uh, uh, yeah, like on the operating lever, like the, the spring, which is there, you can see it's missing some parts between the operating lever, which is at the top and the cam. Um, so yeah, I will, buy, I will have to buy, I will have to source quite a lot of parts to make sure this movement is uh, running again. This uh, arm there, this connecting arm is a bit tight. There we go. Just removing the screws, like a couple of springs. You see that's a hammer spring, but the hammer is missing. Oh, this uh, spring just jumped, but I managed to find it. Like this is uh, the cam. There we go. Just removing the cam. I'm placing back all the screws as well, as always, on a chronograph mechanism, just to make sure I don't mix them. After removing the screws, I'm placing them back. Here we have the, the coupling system. Here we have one screw and you can see there, there is, oh no, the screw is, is missing there. So I will have to remove this broken uh, broken screw. We'll do that a bit later. OK, 
Okay, can remove uh, this part there. Couple of spring that I need to to remove, like small spring. And yeah, there is this bar there of this part as well. You see, it's totally bent. I don't know how did they manage to bend this part, but yeah, we'll have to find a, a new one. So we have the stopper there for the chronograph wheel. Just removing the chronograph wheel now in the center. Yes, yeah, just shaking. Everything is okay. Just a little spring underneath from the chronograph wheel. And uh, we have a pair of uh, version. I will remove this uh, uh, running, uh, this driving wheel. Just focus now on, uh, on the pallet fork. You see, I put a oiler there because I don't know if there is any tension and in the mainspring. So yeah, just see, yeah, it was a tiny bit of tension there, a couple of turns, so yeah. There you go, just remove, remove the last uh, spring there, which is quite tight, you don't go very far. There you go. And I should be able to remove the top plate there from the chronograph and uh, all, the main, all the train of wheel underneath and uh, the, the barrel assembly. There you go, just all by three screws. Just removing the plate there. Just gently, there we go. Just lifting, lifting it up. Oh, it was a, a tiny jump there. Maybe it was still a bit of tension, which is weird because I removed it. I tried to remove the tension there. So I don't know. Yeah, just okay. So now we have the, the barrel assembly and you see uh, some parts that's for the winding system and the train of wheel, obviously. So that's a part for the winding system. Just removing the parts now the, from the train of wheel, just checking each wheels. If the pivots are in good state, if it's not broken, looks okay. Just now, like we have the main spring assembly, just put it aside and uh, we'll disassemble that later. Go, just here, the clutch. And now I just move on the, on the dial side. So dial side, you will have a, a couple of parts from the chronograph is uh, our mechanism and the minute mechanism actually, which is on, uh, on this side as well. So this chronograph has a minute in the center with the hour and uh, minute wheel, which is uh, a bit unusual for a chronograph. Um, so yeah, the, the, the minute is right in the center. So there you see, I, I remove the screws, remove a couple of springs. So you will have an entire system with the hammer, the stopping, uh, stopping uh, lever, for the, this is a stopping lever for the hour, uh, hour wheel from the chronograph. Okay, just removing all the parts. This is uh, our bridge because we'll have the wheel from the, which is underneath. There we go. Just removing, like this is a mechan the wheels for the date system. We have another bridge, just removing the, the screw there. There we go. That's a lot of parts you can see as well. Sometimes on my bench, I have uh, a lot of parts and I try to keep all the parts in uh, small uh, groups, small families. So like that, it would be easier. Uh, I will clean the, the parts in a family as well. We keep them together if you want. And uh, when I put them back together, it will be easier because yeah, I will, I will store them as well uh, as a group. Uh, so it's, uh, it's easier to reassemble the part this way. Okay, so this is like the stopping... Uh, Lever, if you want, for the minute uh, chronograph wheel in the center. And here we have uh, a keyless work, so that's a quick say date uh, mechanism. And here we have a, a standard, more or less, keyless work with uh, minute wheels, with some intermediate wheels. The yoke with the yoke spring there. There we go, that's the yoke, just removing the yoke. And we have the setting lever with a spring, a little spring on the, on the top that I remove with a screw there. So, so far we are pretty good, like we managed to disassemble everything. So as always, when we disassemble all the parts, there is a couple of uh, sub-assemblies that I still need to disassemble, but every, everything will go through a, a cleaning cycle in my uh, cleaning machine uh, to make sure that uh, all, uh, like uh, oil residue of oil grease and oil are removed. If there is any residue in a mechanism, everything will be, uh, will be removed. But first you see like under, uh, some other parts, some, some under some bridge, like there is some small uh, sub-assemblies, so I need to disassemble all of that. 
the wheels, the springs, the small part there. Everything will have to be uh, clean as well and reassemble. So yeah, we want to make sure uh, everything is uh, is disassembled. Here is another bridge with all the under other parts underneath. We take everything away, put the screws back as well, like we did on a on a chronograph bridge. And you see on a bench that start to be quite a lot of parts. I don't know many parts there is on this mechanism, but actually this mechanism is quite complicated because you have a, a standard a timekeeping, a chronograph, automatic, a date, a 24 hour counter, a quick set date. So yeah, there is quite a lot of function in this uh, in this watch, which obviously lead to like uh, more parts compared to a to a standard watch. Um, but yeah, that's what's nice. It's uh, yeah, it's a bit more complicated. A lot more to understand, like how it works, how the parts interact together. We each part what's their job in uh, uh, on the mechanism. So yeah, so now I'm just cleaning like all the jewels with uh, a, a piece of pegwood just to remove, like uh, help to to release, like if there is any dried up oil or grease, it will it will uh, clean easier after when I put it in the machine. Okay, so now I try to open the. The barrel assembly, but this one is a bit different because there is some parts you see on the top there. So I had to to open it with a knife, and uh, yeah, the barrel arbor in the middle looks weird. Like yeah, it's broken. Like there is a top part which is broken, so we'll have to get a, a brand new barrel arbor. Just take uh, the main spring out, just speed it up a bit, and here is the main spring. Uh, it's, uh, it looks okay, but I think I will put a new one just to be sure. Because you see the state of the watch is, uh, yeah, it's a bit rough. So I don't want to take any risk. I will, I will put a new mainspring because yeah, it looks like this, wa this, uh, this watch has a hard life. So I just, uh, I will put a new one. Okay, so now I put all the parts in a basket and they go through the cleaning cycle. First to clean and after to rinse. So if you like the video and if you want to support the channel, I will really appreciate if you can uh, subscribe. Uh, like the video, click on the bell icon so you get some uh, notification when I release new video. I try to release a, a video once a week. Uh, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of effort on the watch, on editing. So I will really appreciate if you push uh, the like button on the video and if you subscribe to the channel. Okay, so now I'm on a rinsing. Uh, that's the uh, last uh, step. Rinse the watch. Uh, just speed it up there, you see, to, to remove as many fluid. And uh, the last final step will be uh, eating the parts just to dry them. And now all the parts are fully clean, so we can uh, focus on uh, reassembly. Okay, perfect. So you see, I'm using my uh, Elma Vintage machine. And this is some of the parts that I had to buy uh, to restore this watch. You see, a lot of parts were missing, a lot of parts were broken. This is a, a small group of parts. Not everything is there. But I had to source a lot of parts on uh, on internet. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy I managed to find a, a lot of parts. Obviously, I bought these parts, I bought this watch for uh, a cheap price because you see the, the part of the watch was uh, quite rough. Uh, actually, I bought it for under 1,000 euros. So I think I bought it for like 800 euros. And uh, yeah, I bought quite a lot of parts, maybe like 200 or 300 euro, because some of these uh, vintage parts are uh, quite uh, quite old and quite expensive. Um, so yeah, uh, maybe I, I, I spend like 300 euro, like or maybe slightly less in, uh, in new parts, maybe 200 euro in parts. Okay, so now I'm just uh, putting oiling the, the jewels from the balance assembly. I treat it in epilam, put a drop of oil in the middle, and now I'm just uh, placing it back into the shock setting, just pu pushing, uh, putting the spring back on the top. Uh, obviously now I did uh, this side and I will have to do the same thing on the other side. So I already treated in epilam and now putting a drop of oil, putting in the center and just putting back the spring. So like that, everything is clean for the, for the balance assembly. It's already clean and oiled. Okay, just focus now on the, on the main spring barrel, just putting some grease at the bottom, putting a bit of uh, graphite grease on the, on the wall there because it's an automatic system. So the spring will slide on the wall. So we put a bit of uh, graphite grease. And like I said, I put a new spring that I bought on the uh, internet there. So you see the spring is already is shipped in this uh, metal ring. And I will just gently press it in place. 
make it fall into the barrel. There we go, just pressing with my tweezers. Yeah, no, the, the spring is still attached. There we go, now I see it just moving. Perfect. The spring is in place. Just going to lubricate the inside. I'm putting a new barrel arbor because you saw like when I disassembled it was broken. Like the top part, you see this uh, pole at the top was broken. Just put a new one, just some lubrification there. And we should be able to close and put the lid back on the top of this uh, barrel assembly. There we go. And I cannot use my uh, my uh, device that I use normally to close the barrel. So I will have to do it with a pair of tweezers, just gently turning, putting a bit of pressure just to close the lid on the top. There we go. So first for the reassembly, what I will do, I will reassemble all the uh, small uh, sub-assemblies on the bridges. So you see there, that's uh, the click spring, just putting the parts, oiling, as, as always, just put some oil when you have a contact metal to metal. And uh, I will just put the screws. And uh, I will uh, reassemble all these small sub-assemblies. And on all the watch, basically, I use three type, three, uh, three type of uh, oil or grease. Basically, you have uh, a low viscosity uh, oil, medium viscosity, and a high viscosity grease. So depending on the application, for this movement, for example, for the Calibre 1040, there is quite a lot of uh, documentation online that you can find and uh, technical uh, documentation from Omega and that tell you exactly how to disassemble, in which order, how to reassemble in which order, and obviously every time which all you need to put at which point. So that's a very valuable piece of information when you want to reassemble a watch properly. Okay, so now I'm placing back on the main plate the barrel, put a ratchet wheel on the top. The center, uh, center wheel from the train of wheel, just make sure I lubricate it before. There we go. And we see uh, it's in place. And I will start reassembling the train of wheel first, okay, with uh, all the wheels. We have the escape wheel, which is always the wheel with the strange shape there. You see, it's like, like little hooks on the, on, the, on the sides. So the third now, the third wheel, and after we'll have the fourth wheel. All the wheels obviously need to find, the, they go in their own jewels and need to find the right position because they all interact with uh, one another and they transmit the power from the main spring to the pallet floor. Okay, so now I'm treating, you see, so in Lubeta, uh, V105, I'm, I'm lubricating the reversing wheel from the, from the winding system. Okay, so that's a kind of uh, treatment of uh, oil greasing of the, of the reversing wheel. So now I'm putting, you see, all the parts that's the parts that interact as well with the mainspring. So that's the parts for the winding system, the automatic winding system. And all the parts are in, so I can put the, the bridge now on the top. Uh, and I need to align all the joules with the pivot point from uh, all the train of wheel underneath. So I go very gently, you see, using a pair of uh, tweezers and uh, plastic sticks there. And when everything finds its position, just put the screws to secure everything in place. And when I'm turning, yeah, you see there, when I'm turning the wheel, the, the other wheel at the other extremity was turning. Okay, so now I'm uh, moving to the dial side and I will assemble the keyless work. Okay, so putting some grease there because that's some parts I see a lot of friction. So I'm putting a, a grease, which has uh, the blue grease. When you see a blue grease, it means it's like uh, my highest viscosity uh, grease. So that's for like uh, application where you will have a lot of strength between the between the spot between the parts, and uh, now putting the parts, the rest of the parts from the from the keyless work. So the keyless work, like I said, when in this assembly is pretty standard. So I'm using the standard uh, rules as well for for greasing. See, I'm grease uh, post of the yoke there. I'm you see, I'm greasing like uh, with blue grease in the in the middle of the clutch, putting there. The yoke spring, which is a very strong spring that can fly, you need to be really careful there. Greasing, you see, the pivot point, greasing the jewel underneath, because after I will not have any access to jewel this, uh, to grease, uh, to oil this uh, jewel, sorry. Greasing, the oiling this post where we have the, the minute wheel. 
there I'm oiling the, the jewel and now I can put these parts basically which is friction mounted because you will have a couple of uh, you, couple of uh, parts in one on this one and I can put the plate on the top which is holding everything and which is uh, the setting lever uh, spring there okay that I need to arm there we go now it's in position putting some grease there some points uh, will have uh, some friction and I can start to assemble the rest of the parts so here we'll have Apart from the chronograph, so that's a uh, hour wheel. That's a hammer from the hour wheel that we come and eat the hour wheel to reset it when I need to reset the wheel. This is a pusher, okay, that uh, come and uh, will uh, push to reset, reset the watch and uh, push a hammer. We have this bridge on the top, which is uh, our bridge from the chronograph. We keep these parts uh, aligned from the from the top. We go, and now when everything is aligned, I should be able to put the, the screws in place. This one is uh, kept in place with two screws. Okay, so, so far so good. Oiling the parts, uh, always don't forget to oil the parts, that's very important. Just to make sure, like the watch after the amplitude of the watch is good. And uh, yeah, it's uh, as well, we limit the wear on the, on the watch. Okay, so now I'm uh, assembled the, the train of wheel, the, 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 the balance assembly, now putting, uh, sorry, the, the mainspring assembly. I did the keyless work on the other side. So basically we have all the function of a standard watch. Uh, so now I can uh, put the pallet fork, okay, which is uh, with a pallet fork bridge on the top, which is held by two screws on this watch. I give it a bit of a wind now that the pallet fork is in place and the moment of truth. Let's see first if the movement is starting. That's uh, always a tense moment, especially on his watch. Remember, he was in bad state, so I even don't know he was not working. So I don't know if he will start or no. Uh, the balance, let's off. Wow, that's a relief because yeah, the 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 watch was such in bad the state. I don't know if I will be able to. Uh, to start this movement, so already like the base movement, which is a uh, way which has a timekeeping in just an hour, minute, and second, is working. Okay, so that's a very good news. Now I can start adding the complication on the watch. So the first one is a chronograph. Okay, so I will start assembling the part from the chronograph. But already we know that uh, the heart of the watch is working. So that's uh, a very good news. Uh, now we need to see if we can assemble the chronograph and if the chronograph will work as well. So first you see I'm putting the cam, this uh, huge screw on the top, and uh, you remember on the plate, so I, I just did that a bit earlier, it was a broken screw, so I use my uh, tools there, you see, to remove the, the broken screws. So basically it's just an element that will keep the screws uh, uh, between two poles and I can rotate the plate around to extract the, the broken screw. So as well, that's a big relief because I didn't know, it's the first time that I use this tool. I didn't know if I would be able to to yeah, to, to remove this broken screw. And if you want to buy a, a plate, uh, uh, like on, on internet, it's quite an expensive part. So I'm very happy that I managed to remove this broken screw and uh, I can start, uh, I can carry on with, with the reassembly of the chronograph. That's all the, the, the all these parts like, the, that go together. They were missing on the, on the, on the, on the mechanism, so I had to buy all these parts. Uh, I managed to find them, like I said, on, on internet. So pretty happy, and uh, obviously, yeah, that's being an unknown if the chronograph will run, uh, because yeah, the watch was a non-runner. So, but he he was not able to run without these parts. So yeah, okay. So now I'm putting uh, this uh, this arm there this uh, operating arm. So like the, that's the screw that was broken. So yeah, I, I, get, I had to get a new screw as well. This screw was already there. So now the arm has a proper two screws. So that's a, a big relief as well. Just putting the spring there for the chronograph wheel in the center. We keep the tension on a, on a chronograph wheel. Just oiling the, the pivot of the chronograph wheel, which is a very long, you need to be careful when uh, 
you remove it when you pull it in, just to make sure to, to don't bend it. I'm oiling the cam there on the top. So that's, a, you see this art shape. That's what the hammer, we'll see a bit later, we install the hammer. That was the part that will come and eat the chronograph wheel. So I'm we come and eat the, this heart shape uh, parts and that will reset the chronograph always to the same position, which is obviously the zero position. This is some wheel, that's a reversing wheel, you remember that I treated in, uh, in uh, Lubeta. Uh, that's for the automatic uh, system, for the automatic winding. And this is a chronograph bridge, obviously, which has a couple of function. Uh, he has some parts for the automatic system and as well to keep uh, the chronograph uh, center wheels. So I'm putting the parts that we go under. And now I'm putting this uh, bridge, I go on the top there, on top of the, of the parts of the chronograph wheel. And uh, I would just keep it in place with the, with the two screws there. Just lubricating the parts, obviously. There is a last wheel there as well. That was the, this wheel will come in contact with the with the rotor, with the winding rotor from the automatic system. Perfect. Okay, so now I can carry on with the rest of the parts on the chronograph. This is a stopper for the for the chronograph wheel in the center chronograph wheel. Just make sure you see with another tweezer, so I will arm the spring there. Just slide it in place and there we go. It's armed, it's in position, can put the screw. So far so good on the chronograph. Just greasing the cam because the cam obviously is the heart of the, of the chronograph system. That's what's driving the chronograph system with uh, start, stop and uh, resetting. So just need to make sure I oil and grease properly uh, everything. So we have the, the coupling uh, arm there which with the coupling wheels. And this function there is to make the connection between the train of wheel and the chronograph. So basically to start the chronograph. And uh, this wheel there is directly connected to the wheel underneath with the, the pivot of the wheel underneath. So I will just press it in place because it's friction mounted. And this wheel is always turning. It's a driving wheel from the chronograph. It's always turning because it's connected directly to the train of wheel underneath. And basically the job of the coupling uh, arms that I just installed before is to transmit the power from the coupling wheel to the chronograph wheel. Now I'm assembling all the springs. That's a hammer. You remember it's a piece that was missing as well. So like I said, the hammer will come and hit the chronograph on the, on the hard cam. And that will reset the, the chronograph to this zero position. This is another spring as well. Just putting the screw there. That's the spring for the hammer. Obviously, there we go. Now I'm just going to arm the spring with, on the hammer. There we go. Okay, so on the chronograph on this side, on the, uh, it was pretty good. So now we move to the dial side. This is a connecting uh, rod. That, uh, so like I said, there is some part of the chronograph which are on the balance side and some of the parts which are on the calendar side. So obviously you have an element that need to transmit the information on, on both sides when you start, stop, reset the chronograph. And that's a function of the first part that I put. That's uh, stopping arms for the minute end in the middle from the chronograph, because remember the minute uh, end of the chronograph, it's in the center uh, for, this, uh, for this model. And here we have an hammer. So the hammer for the minute end, which is in the center. So like the hammer on a chronograph, like we saw on the other side, it will come and hit the minute end and reset it to zero. And we have exactly as well, we have another hammer, which is for the hour end to reset it to zero uh, when we reset the chronograph. Okay, just arming the spring there for the hammer. Perfect. Just putting a drop of oil there because there is a contact metal to metal. And there is this uh, stopping lever there for the hour wheel. Just push it in place. There you will have a, a screw with a shoulder. So yeah, we need to lubricate that as well. Lubricating there, the point, you see like all the points which are contact metal to metal. And there is this spring that go underneath there. There is a little, like a little, underneath that I need to put the spring 
and yeah, just hold it with with a piece of plastic there and with a tweezer, just placing the screw. Sometimes it's a bit of gymnastic yeah, there. There we go, it's in place. Just can screw it in place. Okay, so another sub-assembly there. So that's the part that will go uh, on the top of the chronograph, but on the calendar side. And uh, this is a mechanism as well for the quick save date. Um, yeah, so yeah, just putting everything underneath. And after we should be able to put this plate um, on, the, on the top of the mechanism. And basically, yeah, we are pretty, pretty, pretty good there. We assemble most of the parts. Like I said, so far so good. I managed to find the, the broken part or the lost parts. The assembly is going well. I'm uh, lubricating every field, reassembling everything. The parts look look as well much cleaner than uh, when the, I received the watch or when we opened the watch on the first time. It was a bit of rust. Most of it went away. It was very light rust. Most of, most of it went away in a, in the during the washing process. I had to brush some of the parts as well with my uh, fiberglass pen just to remove a tiny bit of rust. But so far, it's not bad actually. The the, the mechanism looks much better like uh, right now that when we get it uh, at the beginning. And obviously, like you can see, it's still running. So the the main uh, movement is running. Okay, so that's the plate that will be used for the quick side date. Just lubricating there because we put another screw with a shoulder. There you go. And now I can put the plate. You remember that I just assembled the sub assembly there on the other side, on the underneath for the quick side date. And just putting the screws to secure it into position. Perfect. Okay. Just lubricating a couple of parts there. That's a cam, the heart shaped cam for the chronograph, for the minute end in the middle. So just replicating the cam as always, because we want to, when the hammer hits it, we want it to reset it to zero and not to get stuck. Just putting some oil there. That's a, a sub second, uh, like where we have a, the second in the middle, but it's a sub dial where we have a, a 24 hour wheel. There we go. Perfect. That's a little part for the for the calendar side, and we have the how wheel that I put last. Should be able to put now the calendar wheel. Just put it in place there, as close as I can to this uh, final position, and the calendar bridge that go on the top. This plate. There we go, just make sure I align it with uh, the screws and this uh, disc underneath with this 24 hours indicator. Just putting the screws. There we go, perfect. Okay, just lubricating the last parts, putting the spring for the day jumper. Perfect, it's in position. Okay. Just put this screw something weird, like you see the coupling arm when it's free screw, it doesn't move. That should move. So there's something wrong with this screw. And uh, I just bought a new one on uh, internet and look at the difference between the screws. They are not the same. So actually the original screw that was on the watch was not the right one. So now I just putting the, the screw that I bought on the internet and let's see if the coupling arm, when I push, like the coupling arm just moved and connect to the central. Yeah, perfect. So the chronograph, is uh, working, but I saw something weird. The chronograph wheel move, and look at the top of the chronograph wheel. On the right, it's a new one that I just bought on the internet. You see this little pivot there is missing on the other one. It was broken. So the top pivot was broken on the chronograph wheel. So I just got a new one. So just put it back in place, lubricate the cam like on, we did on the other one. I will reinstall the bridge on the top, and. Uh, Normally, the chronograph should be a lot better because actually when the hammer was hitting the wheel, as there was no, uh, no pivot point at the top, the wheel was moving. Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, it was not staying centered. So that's not good at all. So yeah, that's another broken part that I managed to find and fix.
Okay, so the dial, I just did a quick clean. Actually, I quite like the dial. It's, uh, yeah, it's damaged, but it tells the story. The quick say date is working on a calendar, so that's, uh, that's good. Let's see now when we just speed it up there. You see on a 24 hour indicator, see at midnight if the, the date is, uh, is jumping as well. Yes, it jumped. Perfect. So can I install this, uh, this kind of a spacer ring that go uh, where we put the dial, the dial will go on top of it. So here we go, just need to make sure I align it where with the hole where we'll have the, uh, the dial fit. Yes, that's good. Just put the dial. I love this little uh, pink uh, rainbow like uh, on the dial. I don't know how that happened, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it give it, it, give it uh, like a special look, let's say. And the blue, you can see still some, uh, some sunburst in the blue. Let's see at midnight if the date is changing. Yes. So now we just set it at midnight so I can set the hand. We'll align all the hand. So that's a hour hand. We'll align it to midnight. Just press it in place with my Eurotech tool. We go, just put a bit of pressure there. And uh, after we put the, the other hand, so you see in the center, there is quite a lot of hands. So that's not uh, actually, it's, it's a minute hand, but it's not a minute hand for the time. It's a minute hand from the chronograph, which has a, a weird shape. I did not restore the hand as well. I, I wanted to keep that as original because the dial is not in perfect shape. So it would look weird if the hands were in perfect shape. So I wanted to keep uh, yeah some continuity between the dial and the hand if you want. So yeah, Put the, that's a minute hand from the timekeeping that I aligned to midnight as well. And I will just press it in place. Okay, perfect. So far, so good. Just checking if the date is changing close to midnight. Oh yeah, just after midnight, like four minutes, uh, three minutes after midnight, that's perfect. Uh, my rule of thumb is like plus minus 15 minutes and about three minutes is, uh, is perfect. Just putting the center second there from the chronograph. So again, just checking. If everything is uh, working, you see, first news, the chronograph is working. Yes. Just stopping. Just try to restart it. Just uh, pushing a bit, uh, not in the middle there. Yeah, perfect. It's starting again. Just stopping and we try to reset. Yes, everything reset to zero. Very good, very good news. So now the last 10 from the chronograph, which is uh, our hand. So again, align it to zero. Just press it in place. And we have the last hand, which is a second hand from the from the time, so which is running all the time. This second hand, which is above this twenty four hours indicator. Perfect. Everything is in place. Just a last check on the, our hand. Okay, so let's focus on a case now, which is in bad shape. So first, the crystal is not the original crystal, and somebody glue the crystal like uh, acrylic crystal. So it was so annoying to remove it. So I tried to remove as, as much glue as I can with I could with a, a peg wood and a, a screwdriver. Uh, but you see this inner ring was a bit damaged. I don't know if it was damaged with water, but obviously it was not watertight like with glue like that. Uh, I tried to remove the rubber ring inside, but I could not. So I decided to press it out. So I used my press, my crystal press, just to press the inner ring. There, so the inner ring is out. And now I just remove this gasket, which is inside, normally for the crystal. There we go. And now we put everything in a ultrasonic machine. Uh, but first I need to remove the pushers and you can see the screw is weird. It's not turning uh, normally. Uh, the head like is a bit uh, off center when I, when I turn it. That's not normal. Oh my God, that's, uh, yeah. I will have to do something with that as well. It looks like this one is the same. I don't know, how did they manage to bend these screws? Yeah, like they push like crazy on a, on a pushers, but yeah. Okay, I will see if I can uh, fix that. I had to use a pair of pliers to remove the pushers. It was so dirty that they were stuck. I don't know if it was glue or I don't know, but like they were stuck like with like kind of green thing inside. Just try to remove as many dots as I can with like uh, peg wood and broken oiler there uh, in the pusher and everything. And everything will go into my ultrasonic machine. 
and we see after what we can do with the with the parts and how they came out of the ultrasonic machine. Just put this little part in a basket. Okay, I just uh, try to clean the the inner ring there with a, a bit of water, just because yeah, it was a bit dirty with like the glue and everything. Obviously, it's a bit damaged, but yeah. Okay, so the part came out of the ultrasonic machine quite well. You see, like there is no trace of uh, glue anymore. So I just put the inner ring with a new uh, seal, just uh, push it in place there, press it in place, and I will use my press uh, to make sure it sit, uh, sit down fully in the in the case. Just press it there, just gently, there we go. Now I'm pressing a new crystal, which is uh, the right crystal and not an acrylic uh, crystal with glue. And uh, now I'm just trying to unbend the screws because yeah, did not look actually, but sometimes it's difficult. You see the first one, actually quite good there. Now I'm doing the second one. So just a bit of tweezers and a bit of patience. I just try to bend them the right way. And here's these two screws, look pretty straight. So let's put that back together and see. So put the spring there for the pushers. The case looks uh, much cleaner. And yeah, on the other side, uh, pushing the, the screws, not easy to film. Uh, it's a tricky place there, a bit, uh, yeah, a bit crooked to, to, to screw it in place, but yeah, just putting the screws, just putting a brand new gasket, just make sure like uh, the watch is as, as what I tight as possible. And here we go now, putting the clean case with the clean crystal, that uh, looks much better already, yeah, than uh, compared to when I get the watch. And the Beautiful movement, beautiful, like, yeah, it looks much cleaner. Like, we find the color, it was a bit like blend, like when we got it. And now you can see the, the color, like this copper color is popping again a bit. Um, putting the winding stem there, to the I cut it to the correct lens because at the beginning it was not at the correct lens. Putting the rotor back in place. There we go, just aligning the three screws there, just putting these three little screws, the tiny screws. There we go, just oiling as well the, the bearing, the ball bearing, and we can close the watch. Perfect. You can put the case back. Just, uh, I, did not, I didn't want to polish this watch, just wanted to keep it as original. And there we go, this is a final, uh, final watch, you see the chronograph. Chronograph is uh, running properly. That's uh, that's a good news. Uh, date, quick say date is working. You can change uh, check if you can change the time. Perfect. And there is a final result on the chronograph. You see, it's uh, just gaining like three seconds a day when it's stabilizing with an amplitude of 260, which is quite good, and a bit error which is close to zero. So for a non-runner, when I got it, like I'm pretty pleased with the result. Uh, with the amplitude and just uh, like gaining few seconds a day and this is the final result on my wrist with the original bracelet that i managed to find on, a, on another watch i'm pretty happy hope, hope you like the restoration and i see you next time for my next project bye bye